Hello and welcome to Excel Pivot Tables Like a Pro. My name is Randy. I am an e-library specialist with the Jacksonville Public Library, and I'm happy to be your instructor for this class. So pivot tables are a powerful feature that allow you to rearrange and restructure data in multiple ways to look at things from a different angle or perspective. Now they sound intimidating and complicated, but they are relatively easy to create. So what this class will cover, well, first we'll talk about why we want to use a pivot table and what the big deal is about them. And then we'll talk about how to format your data before converting it into a pivot table. Next, we'll talk about how to rearrange data using fields when you have your pivot table created. And we'll also talk about how to use filters and how to use slicers as an alternative to filters. And then last, we'll talk about how to format data a little bit to make it look nicer. So I'll be using Excel 2019 today, but if you have an older version at home or at work, you can use this as well, but things may look a little bit different. I also just want to add that if you don't have Excel at home to practice pivot tables on, you can use Google Sheets instead, which is free. All you need is just to make a Google account. And if you already have a Gmail email address, that means you have a Google account. But things, again, will look a bit different than what you see here. So let's go ahead and go into a live demonstration in Excel. So here I am in Excel and I have a set of data here. It's a list of transactions where I have the date and the amount and what I sold here. And it's a good set of data, but maybe it's not arranged in a way that's useful to me. Maybe I'm in a presentation or a meeting and someone asks me how many washers were sold in January. So the answer is in here, but it may not be so easy to pull it out. One way is I could simply just manually count out how many washers I had in January, which wouldn't be that big of a deal if I didn't have that many transactions. In other ways, if I was comfortable with using the count if function, I could pull out the same information as well. Or maybe I could use some filters and filter out the months and the types of products that were sold. Okay, so maybe a few seconds later, someone else asked me a different question. They want to compare the east region and the north region and how many dryers were sold in the first half of the year, as well as a product breakdown. So again, I can use those same three methods that I mentioned earlier but it probably wouldn't be the easiest. And that's where pivot tables come into play. We can use pivot tables to easily rearrange this data instead of us having to draw this out again in another way. Now, before we can make this into a pivot table, we need to make sure that our data is formatted correctly. And the biggest thing is we need to make sure our data is continuous. So you can see here, we already have a blank column here in column E, and we also have a blank row in row seven. So we need to get rid of these. Now, the way I'm going to do that is I'm simply going to right click here. I'll start with a column. I'll right click on column E here. I'll bring up a menu and then I'll just simply choose delete to get rid of it. I'll go ahead and do the same thing with row seven. I'll go ahead and right click on the number seven and choose delete from the menu as well. Now you notice I have a blank cell here and a blank cell is okay. I can still make a pivot table with this. It's just blank rows and entire blank columns where I'll have an issue. If possible, I would like to have all my data filled out, but again, it's not necessary. But for this, I'll go ahead and fill out the West region here and I'll hit enter. Now you wanna check the rest of your data to make sure it is continuous. And there's a keyboard shortcut to do that. I'll go ahead and click any cell here. I'll start in A2. I'll use the control and the down arrow key and that will take me to the bottom of this data set. And I'll scroll down a little bit, but yeah, now I'm confident that this is the end of my data. Now, if you had a blank row in here, it would stop right at the blank row and you could just delete that blank row and continue again with control and the down arrow until you reach the end of your data and you're sure that there are no more breaks. Same with columns. Now, I know that I don't have any blank columns here, but if you had 20 or 30 columns, you could use control and the right arrow key and that would take you to the rightmost column looking for any breaks on the way there. I'll go ahead and use control and the up arrow to return to the top. Now there's one more thing I need to do before I can make this into a pivot table. I need to make this into a regular table first. And to do that, I simply have to make sure that I have any cell in this data set selected. Once I have that, I can go up into the insert tab in the ribbon and I'll simply click on table. Now in this window here, it's asking where the data is for the table. And because I went through the work already and made sure it was continuous, I don't need to double check this. I'll go ahead and leave this check mark here, but basically this is just saying that I have labels here for my columns. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I simply have my table. Now the reason I convert this into a table is because later on in the future, if I add more transactions, whether it's one transaction or 20 transactions, it will automatically add it and make it a part of this table. 
and when I make it a part of this table, that will translate over to the pivot table if I need to update that as well. From here, now I can make a pivot table. I'll go ahead and go to the insert tab. And all the way to the left, I have two options. I have a pivot table and I also have recommended pivot tables here. I'll go ahead and click on recommended pivot tables. And this is Excel analyzing my data and giving me some suggestions on some layouts I might like to use for a pivot table. And this can be useful if I don't have a lot of time or if I just want a starting point where I can simply fiddle around with it after that. But I'm gonna show you how to make a pivot table from scratch. So I'll go ahead and hit cancel here in the corner. And I'll go back into my ribbon and I'll choose pivot table. Now there, it's asking me two questions here. One is again, where is my data? And here it says table one. And the second question is asking me where I want the pivot table to be. By default, it will put it on a blank new worksheet. And that's what I usually like to do. But for today's video, I'm gonna choose the existing worksheet so I can show you comparisons between the regular table and this pivot table over here. So I'll choose existing worksheet. Now, when I choose existing worksheet, I need to choose one more thing and that's where on the existing worksheet I wanna place it. So I'll simply go back to my worksheet and click where I want it to start. I'll click here in cell G1 and now I can click okay. When I do that, I can now see this sidebar over to the right and I can see these categories here, date, amount, and so forth, which match my original table. And then I'll see the four different fields towards the bottom of the sidebar, filters, columns, values, and rows. And all I would do from here is drag any of these categories and drop them into the, any of these fields here. And when I do that, I'll notice my pivot table start to form over here on the left side. Now, a good place to start with is anything that has to deal with numbers, whether that's sales numbers or number of hours worked or number of items sold. Anything that has to do with numbers, I like to put that into the values field. So with my data set, I do have an amount category here. So simply click and drag this and drop it into the values field. And when I do that, you'll notice that my pivots table is starting to form over here again on the left. Now here it says I have around $269,000 in total sales here. Now I'd like to add a dollar sign and a comma here. So I can do that by again, going back to the values field. And I'll notice here it says sum of amount and there's a little drop down menu. I'll click on this and I'll choose value field settings here. And here in the lower left corner of this window, it says number format. So I'll click on this. And because I'm dealing with money or currency, I have two options. I can use currency here or I can use accounting. I'll go ahead and choose accounting though and I'll click okay. And I'll click okay one more time to confirm that. And that will add my dollar sign and that comma as well. Now from here, it's simply, how do I want to break this data up? Do I wanna know how much I made each month? Do I want to know how much each region made? I'm gonna go ahead and figure out how much I made by product. So I'm gonna go over and find the product category here. And I'll just drop it into the columns field and see what that looks like. Now, when I drop that in, you'll again notice my pivot table starts to rearrange here. Let me go ahead and scroll over to the right here. And so now I know that DM1500 had about $11,000 in sales, and I can see the rest of the products all the way across here. Now, notice that each product has its own columns. So column H has information for DM1500, column I has DM1600, and so forth all the way down to the end. And that's because I dropped a product into the columns field. So each product has its own column. Maybe I realize that this is not as easy to read. So I'm gonna go ahead and take product and drop it into the rows field. And I'll see that my data rearranges. So this is the same data that I saw a few seconds ago when it was all in different columns, but this time it's just in different rows here because I dropped it into the rows field. So now again, it's a little bit easier to read when it's in here. Now also I wanna point out that, remember this was the original table here and we simply took this and pivoted data to get this information in this form here. Now maybe I'm looking at this and I realize I don't really know what DM2500 is. Is that a laptop or is that a TV or is PLX, is that a laptop or a washer? I'm not quite sure. So I'll go ahead and take another category from my sidebar here, and I'm gonna go and drop this into the rows field as well. And now I can see here what each product is. So now I know that DM1500 is a dryer, and it looks like this whole DM line are dryers, and the DTX line are desktops here. But I'm looking at this, and again, I'm thinking, this isn't quite as easy to read as I would like. Now, if I look at the pattern here, I'll notice that it has the product and then the type, 
and then the product here, and then the type and so forth all the way to the bottom. Well, if I look back into the rows field, I'll notice that it's following that same pattern, product and type here. So let me go ahead and take product here and I can drop it right underneath type. And I'll see that the table rearranges here. Now I have the type of product and then all the products listed underneath it. But my point here is if things aren't looking quite right, try looking at what order you have your categories in these fields here and try rearranging them. Now I can also see here that I have these minus signs next to each type here. And so I can collapse these groups if I don't need quite a detailed look at each type here. And I'll make it less cluttered to look at. Okay, so now from here, maybe I decide that I would also like a monthly breakdown. So I also have that data here. I have a date category. I'm going to take this and drop it into the columns. Now keep an eye on the columns field here. I'll drop this in. And notice that there is an extra months label or category in here that was not part of the original data set here. This is Excel just taking our dates and kind of grouping it into what it thinks is a sensible way, which in this case was months. And if I scroll my data over here and I look at my pivot table in the months, I'll notice that I also have these plus signs just like I do with these product types as well. And if I click these plus signs, it'll expand the data and I can look at specific days here and the sales that were made on those specific days. But again, if I don't need that much of a detailed look, I can collapse these. Now I can group these dates in different ways. For example, maybe I want to group them into quarters instead. So if I want to do that, I can right click on any month. I'll go ahead and right click on January though. And from this menu, I'll choose group. And here I'll see that days and months are highlighted in blue. So maybe again, I'm not that interested in the daily look, but I am interested in quarters, the larger picture. So we'll go ahead and select that. I'll click OK to confirm. And now I'll see that there's an extra quarter column over here after every three months. And again, I can hit this minus sign here for each quarter. Maybe I'm only interested in quarter four at the moment, so I can close or collapse quarters two and three here and pay attention more to quarter four. And once I'm done with looking at each month here in quarter four, I can collapse that as well and just see on a quarter by quarter basis and then the grand total at the end. Now there's one more field we haven't mentioned yet and that's the filters field. We also haven't used this region category or label yet either. So I'll go ahead and take region and drop it into filters here. Now, when I do that, I'll see that we have region here and it says all, so we have this filter here. So right now, all these numbers here are reflecting all the sales and all the regions here. But maybe I want to focus on a particular region. So now that I've dragged region into the filters field, I can use this drop down menu for all and simply choose a region here. So I'll select the East region and I'll click OK. And now these numbers reflect just the East region. And maybe I see here that in quarter three, there were no desktop sold. So maybe that's something I want to look at here for that anomaly. Now an alternative to filters is using what's called a slicer. And I like to use slicers because I think they're faster and easier and also can reduce clutter in the pivot table itself. Sometimes I have a lot of things in this pivot table and these fields here, and I have just a cluttered and messy looking pivot table. With a slicer, I can reduce that. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. Let me go ahead and go into the sidebar and remove region here by clicking and dragging it out. I'm going to do the same thing with quarters and the dates here. Now I just have a smaller pivot table here. I'm going to go up into the ribbon and I'm going to go to insert slicer. If you don't see this option here, make sure you're in the analyze tab in the ribbon. And then now I can choose insert slicer. I'll get these same categories here as in my sidebar. And for this, I'll choose date and region and I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, when I do this, I'll see these two slicers over here. I'm going to move them off to the side. And again, I can use these as filters. So maybe I'm interested in only January's numbers, so I can select January. And I'll see that my table automatically updates to reflect that information there. And maybe I want to, again, focus on a particular region, maybe the North region in January. So I can click there and it updates again. I could also select multiple items at the same time. And to do that, I need to hold down the control key on my keyboard and select extra months. So if I want to see the first quarter, I can select February and March and add that to the numbers. And when I let go of the control key on my keyboard, it will reflect those as well. And if I want to clear these back and again, show all the data at the same time, I can clear the filters by using this button here for the date. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the region as well.
Now, a couple of other things I want to point out is one, we were first only interested in the sale amounts over here, but maybe I was also concerned about volume. How many units of these products was I pushing out the door? So I can't have both pieces of information up here at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my sidebar here. And because remember this has to deal with numbers, I'm gonna go ahead and take the amount category or label over here and drop that also into the values field. Now, when I do that, you'll notice here in my pivot tables, it just gives me another sum here. So it gives me the same numbers, same sales amounts here, but that's not what I'm interested in. So I'm gonna go back into my values field and I'll go back to this drop down menu for the second one here. And I'll click on value field settings. I was here earlier when I was adding dollar signs in that comma earlier. And I'll notice these other functions here I can choose from, count, average, and so forth. Now, again, because I'm interested in volume, I'll choose count. And one more thing here is that here I can also add a custom name. So here it's gonna give me count of amount two, which doesn't really make that much sense. So I'll go and change this to something that's more intuitive. So I'll say number of units sold. I'll go ahead and click okay to confirm that. And I'll see here that it updates here. So now I can see that I had 40 units of desktop sold for selling for about $24,500. I can see the rest of those products as well if I want to. And then the last thing I wanna point out is simply how to add styles to this pivot table. So once I have the data the way I want it to be, I can now focus on making it easier to read. So I'll go back up to the ribbon and I'll click on the design tab and I'll see a bunch of styles over here. Now these are not the only options here. There is a more option. If I click on this button here, it shows me the rest of the styles in the collection and I can scroll down here. I can also hover over any of these to kind of get a preview of what that would look like before I commit to a style here. So maybe I decide that I like, let's say this one here, so I'll click on it. And now I have this style. So that's it for pivot tables. Hopefully I was able to show you the potential that we have here when we're rearranging data. Let me go ahead and again, show you the original table here. This is the table that we started with and we have rearranged it into a way that answered our questions that we were concerned with. Make sure you check out our other Excel classes like Excel, learning formulas and functions, and also keeping track of your money in Excel. You can go to our website, www.jackspublliberary.org to register for those classes and take a look at our other topics as well. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in a future class.